Clash Royale for a long time has been a fairly simple game to understand, and back in 2016, there were far fewer cards than there are today. At the game's launch, there were only three cards that could fly and attack other troops. Minions, Minion Horde, and Baby Dragon. The Minions were fairly good single target damage dealers for their elixir cost, but very susceptible to spells and splash cards. The Baby Dragon on the other hand dealt splash attacks and was fairly resistant to spells given its higher health, but dealt very little damage per second. There were two other flying cards, Lava Hound and Balloon, which couldn't attack troops and neither were incredibly popular. Lava Hound with Balloon was a combo that was occasionally seen together but didn't thrive in the meta, partially as a result of not enough air support options. There was certainly a high demand for more air units, which eventually led to the creation of the Mega Minion, a card that kept the benefits of having a high DPS for its cost, like minions, and the benefits of being resistant to big spells like the baby dragon, all for just three elixir. But like many older cards, it successfully filled a role for its time, but slowly phased out of the meta due to an ever-changing game environment with increased competition. So today we're going to cover the entire history of the Mega Minion, when, why, and where it worked well, and observe how it fell to where it is today. The Mega Minion was officially released into Clash Royale on September 19th, 2016. So where would this troop fit in? What would incentivize a player to include this card over the regular minions and baby dragon? Like I already explained, this card was resistant to spells, being able to survive a poison, whereas the regular minions couldn't even survive arrows. So even though both minions and mega minion were able to fully counter a balloon for example, you didn't have to worry about your Mega Minion being taken out by a spell or even a supportive Baby Dragon. The Mega Minion was also a better counter to splash cards like the Wizard and Witch that the minions were ineffective against. The Mega Minion dealt enough damage as to where it could one-shot anything up to and including archers, even though the combined damage per second of three minions was slightly higher than Mega Minion's, Mega Minion was much more reliable. But on the downside, since it was only one unit and had a slower attack speed than a regular minion, it was terrible against swarm cards like Skeleton Army. This unit also had a movement speed of medium unlike the other flying units which had a movement speed of fast, but despite that, Mega Minion did more damage to towers if left alone, getting two full swings if not attended to. Both minions and Mega Minion were not very threatening on offense, but Mega Minion seemed even worse than minions in most offensive situations, like if you were trying to use it to absorb an Inferno Tower for a big tank. When analyzing the advantages and disadvantages between Mega Minion and minions, at a glance it can seem like there are fair reasons to use one over the other both ways, but almost immediately after release, it was clear that Mega Minion was naturally the stronger choice almost every single time besides a few niche situations because in only one week, this card was already being seen in one-fifth of top ladder decks and had a prominent role in the most popular deck in the game, which was Giant Poison or Goizen for short. Even though this new strong air support unit should have theoretically brought Lava Hound into the meta, the data suggested it was doing worse after its release. Mega Minion was clearly very strong, which is why it was a bit surprising when it didn't appear in the balance changes that happened one month after its release. You'd think they'd tone it down at least a little, but it appeared Supercell was being hesitant. Goizen was a very powerful combo that was getting the most attention by the community and Supercell themselves, so the October balance changes focused on toning down the power of that duo. It was the deck Mega Minion was working best in anyway, so it was sort of an indirect nerf. But of course, this card didn't need Goizen to thrive. It was still very versatile and powerful on its own. After the October balance changes, Mega Minion rose to being the third most popular card and second most used troop card in top ladder, appearing in a whopping 54% of the top ladder decks, including the top three, which were all different archetypes. There would be another set of balance changes on November 1st, but the Mega Minion would manage to avoid the nerf hammer yet again. Players were frustrated, stating the Mega Minion needed a nerf, and yet it wasn't getting one. In the top 50 winning battle decks in the King's Cup held at the end of October 2016, Mega Minion was in 43 or 86% of them, and in that same month, it officially rose to being the number one card, not troop card, but card period in top ladder, 
being used by 84% of top ladder players. It was literally being used in everything from Giant to Hall Grider to Golem to Royal Giant to Minor Control to Expo and even Lava Hound was finally starting to gain some traction with the Goizen duo faded out. This card was frequently now referred to as the Meta Minion. Some people even commented on it as being a flying mini P.E.K.K.A. This card was so efficient at countering everything, even a giant. There weren't that many cards that could even attack air, so the Mega Minion being in the air kept it relatively safe. The only real viable cost reasonable counters there seemed to be were the Musketeer and Archers. Even something like Spear Goblins were not reliable enough of a counter due to the popularity of the Zap that could instantly take them out. You might assume that because Mega Minion was so good at what it did, that other flying cards like Minions would be boxed out but they were actually still performing decently. In fact, that Lava Hound deck I just showed you, which was used on top ladder by multiple players, had all three minion cards in it. I couldn't exactly find a reason as to why Supercell was refusing to nerf this card. It had been out for over two months by this point and was only growing in popularity by the week and was now sitting at the very top. But the Mega Minion made one critical mistake in November, and that was surpassing the use rate of the log. Something I've noticed about overpowered cards throughout all eras of Clash Royale history is that no matter how lenient they may be towards a broken card, once it surpasses the almighty log, it must be toned down. I'm kidding here, but the log historically has been kept in too strong of a state for most of its history, meaning its rates have typically been a good example of stats to represent an overpowered card. So now, it was clear that it would not be able to avoid the nerf hammer much longer. Finally, on November 30th, 2016, the Meta Minion would be receiving a long overdue nerf. Its damage per hit would be reduced by 6%, as well as receiving a tenth of a second hit speed increase. There weren't any major interaction differences from these changes. It would still be able to one-shot archers and get two hits on the Princess Tower if left alone. But overall, its damage per second was reduced by about 15%, which is a lot, but justified for such a powerful card. Looking at the top ladder stats about one week after this nerf, it was still the most used card in top ladder, remaining in 83% of the decks. The nerf hadn't made a dent in its popularity. The meta minion was unstoppable. And just for some further perspective, the second most popular card in top ladder at the same time was the archers at 68% usage, a whopping 15% behind. And they were primarily being used because they were one of the, if not the best counter to the meta minion. Later in December, archers were performing worse though because a new card, the Elite Barbarians, got buffed in the balance changes, and not only were they very strong in the meta, but they could one-shot archers, paving a path for the meta minion to thrive. It was a bit shocking that the meta minion was absent from the December balance changes given that the previous nerf didn't seem to accomplish what it was supposed to. There still wasn't great counterplay to this beast. Some argued its health should have been decreased. Why shouldn't a 3 elixir card at least die to a 4 elixir fireball? Even if the Mega Minion did die to fireball, the Mega Minion player would be up 1 elixir. A major interaction change like this seemed necessary, but Supercell was stubborn on keeping its health the same, as in the next set of balance changes in January 2017, they nerfed the Mega Minion's damage again by 4% and slowed down its hit speed by another tenth of a second. They emphasized in the explanation that they wanted to keep it feeling armored and resistant. These changes now meant it required 5 shots to take out a Baby Dragon or a Mini P.E.K.K.A. instead of 4 and its damage per second overall was nerfed by about 10.5%. I think this was actually a good approach because the Mega Minion's main purpose was to be a more resistant flying defender. Nerfing the health would have only made it more similar to Minions. The Mega Minion was special because it couldn't just instantly be wiped away with a spell for an equal or minus one elixir trade and then not have to be thought about. But for such a cheap cost, having that advantage plus the advantage of not being a ground unit required a lower DPS to be balanced. Supercell had clearly underestimated all the factors originally. I do agree the Mega Minion should have been kept at 3 elixir to better compete with minions, but it made me wonder how a version of Mega Minion that kept all of these benefits at 4 Elixir would have influenced the game. 
This latest balance change may not have seemed like a big deal, since it was similar to the first set of changes and those changes barely hurt it. But that wouldn't be the case here. The use rate took a pretty big hit after the balance changes and continued to dwindle in the following weeks. Minions had surpassed the Mega Minion by this point, becoming the most used troop card in Top Ladder. This was in part thanks to the major Zap nerf in January. Zap was much less popular now, and even though Zap couldn't take out minions unless it was two levels higher, it left them incredibly fragile. The Zap nerf along with the new Goblin Gang saw in a new era of Swarm and Bait decks, and as we already discussed, the Mega Minion was ineffective against Swarm cards, so on top of the nerfs, there simply wasn't as much of a demand for Mega Minion right now. Plus, new cards like the Dark Goblin and Executioner that could attack air were added, so although the direct nerfs seemed fairly small, there were certainly a lot of indirect nerfs that contributed to the Mega Minion's downfall, but I wouldn't even call this a downfall because a downfall implies the card was useless, and that wasn't true by any stretch. In fact, by the end of February, the use rate rose a bit again to a whopping 38% in top ladder, making Mega Minion the second most used troop card in the game only behind, surprisingly, the minions. Even though these cards were sort of in competition with each other, they weren't really stepping on each other's toes. In fact, the most used deck in Top Ladder at this time contained all three minion cards. I know I discussed how the environment was changing for the worse when it came to Mega Minion, but that was a bit misleading because the climate was changing in ways that favored it as well. As we kind of discussed earlier, the Log was the single most popular card in the game at the moment, and being able to completely avoid any potential threat from it was a huge benefit to flying cards. The Log's popularity naturally contributed to the Zap's fall, which benefited Mega Minion because Zap could prevent all chip damage from a standalone Mega Minion, whereas the Log didn't prevent anything. And with arrows not being too prominent at the moment, it gave some more room for other minion cards to breathe. Having air defense was so crucial in this environment. 8 of the top 10 decks and 5 of the top 5 had one of these cards in it. Mega Minion was still an extremely versatile card thriving in a variety of archetypes. It could be argued that it still needed some more toning down, but it wouldn't have been a great time for it, since these flying cards were helping to keep overpowered ground cards like Log in check. Without their presence, powerful ground-based cards would be even more of a pain. Keep in mind, the minion's popularity was way higher than it was a few months prior without receiving any balance changes, so there was clearly a huge factor of environment here. The arrows got a speed buff in March, which helped Mega Minion surpass them in terms of popularity. Throughout Throughout the rest of 2017, Mega Minion stood its ground, remaining in the top 10 most popular cards no matter the environment. The only time the Mega Minion barely slipped out of the top 10 was during the Night Witch's reign. The Night Witch in its early days was a bat spawning machine, quickly filling the arena with these little pests after being placed. This was pretty overwhelming for a slow attacking single target unit as you could imagine. Even at its worst though, it was still objectively one of the best cards in Clash Royale and the only balance change it received throughout the entire year was in January. Mega Minion seemed like it was just getting away with being too strong. How could this card's reign possibly be quelled? In the early months of 2018, it was only doing better. Other cards that rose to prominence in 2017, like Inferno Dragon and Flying Machine, didn't seem to be competing with the Mega Minion whatsoever. Those cards, if anything, only increased the demand for Mega Minion to help deal with them. But these card additions, along with some other changes, could suggest that Supercell was trying to indirectly diminish the Mega Minion's versatility rather than directly nerfing it. Think about it. You saw new cards released that were effective cheap counters to the Mega Minion as well as the release and rise of more troop targeting flying units. And even some balance changes such as nerfing the crown tower damage of all spells, making them overall less prominent in the meta, giving more room to competitors that were susceptible to spells being implemented. Now, do I believe that Supercell was releasing new cards and implementing balance changes specifically to indirectly nerf the Mega Minion? No. But I think because this card filled such a unique role that it wasn't seen as having too good stats for a 3 elixir card, 
but rather lacked proper competition for the spot it filled. Being a spell-resistant 3 elixir flying unit was a niche no other card could fill. I think the Mega Minion was comparable to the Miner. The Miner was a 3 elixir troop that could be placed anywhere on the arena. It was the only troop that had that ability, and it often had an exceptionally high use rate. Yet there was no rush or even pressure from the community to nerf this card because it was widely seen as just being versatile and filling a very unique role, instead of having two good stats for 3 elixir. But even if the Mega Minion's lack of true competition was allowing it to thrive, arguably its stats were still too good for its low cost. In the February and April 2018 seasons, it once again was the most used troop finishing a top ladder being used in nearly or even more than half of the top 200 decks. It wouldn't be until July 2018, a year and a half since its previous balance change, for it to appear in the balance changes yet again. Supercell was still refusing to touch its health. Once again, they opted to slow down its hit speed by one tenth of a second, making it deal 7% less damage per second. One major interaction difference this caused was now in a one-on-one -on -one interaction with no interference, Bats would win against the Mega Minion. This was the third consecutive nerf. The Mega Minion now hit three-tenths of a second slower than it did upon release. I'll say now though, a card that is used in half of all decks one season does not simply disappear from the meta overnight from a tenth of a second hit speed nerf. That small of a nerf is one of the smallest nerfs a card can get. It's usually a safe balancing option if a card is too strong and it's not certain what the best way to balance it out is, due to it rarely causing major interaction differences. So even with this third nerf, the card was doing just fine. In fact, it was still quite popular. But it was finally starting to phase out of some archetypes like Graveyard and Hog Rider Control. It was still pretty versatile, so it definitely wasn't completely gone from those, but it was now most commonly seen in Beatdown with either the Giant, Lava Hound, or Golem. After this balance change, it definitely felt much fair to go against. It still had above average rates, but I think most players were content with that at this point. And I think the higher rates can at least be partially attributed to the lack of competition like we already discussed. Minions and Mega Minion kind of remind me of the Zap and Log situation, the only two cards that really fit their niche and were both exceptionally popular, and nobody was crying for nerfs for either of those. And they weren't even strict competitors since you could find lots of meta decks that included both of them. It's certainly not the same thing because spells are more reactive to the meta than troops are, but I think it's a pretty good analogy nonetheless. Personally, I've always had a belief that a card's versatility and lack of competition shouldn't be ignored when it comes to balancing. After all, if a card fades out of the meta because a better alternative takes over, that has been used as a premise to buff that phased card. But on the other hand, if a card isn't disrupting the meta or making it significantly less fun, then it may be best for the sake of the player base to leave that card statistically a little too good. As we go into 2019, well into six months after the previous Mega Minion nerf, the use rate was settling between 20 and 25%. It was steadily growing until around April, where it officially once again became the most used troop card in competitive play at around 34% usage. And maybe I should have mentioned this earlier, but the goal for a healthy card around 2018 to 2019 was 7 to 9 percent usage. But at this point, I think it was pretty clear that Supercell wasn't really trying to get the Mega Minion to be around that range. In most situations, when a card has a use rate in the 30s, people would be screaming for nerfs, but this card didn't really make the game less enjoyable by being in around one third of decks. At this rate though, it seems like Mega Minion would inevitably get another tenth of a second hit speed nerf eventually. Because they were so adamant on not messing with the troop's health, there wasn't really much else to go after besides hit speed. Its next change wouldn't come until July 2019, one year since its last. This was the infamous month in Clash Royale's history where they were simplifying all melee ranges. There were now three categories of range. Melee short, melee medium, and melee long. The categories were relatively close, so most cards were able to fit into a category without any major change to their range. The only two troops that were drastically affected by this were Minions and Mega Minion, whose range was reduced by four tenths of a tile. From 2 to 1.6, it was now classified under the melee long category. But even this new melee long category was much shorter than what the Mega Minion had had. 
Just to give some more perspective, 4 tenths of a tile is the difference between melee medium and melee long, so it was basically a full categorical downgrade for the minions. This was the change that really put some pressure on the card. Now it was much harder to keep it locked onto a single target. This was an especially bad environment for this to happen in because the giant snowball was very popular, and this spell could easily knock the mega minion out of range from whatever it was attacking. And since the mega minion moved at the same speed as a balloon, if you knocked it out of range and you didn't have anything else to stop it, then it couldn't catch up to the balloon until it made it to the tower. And perhaps the biggest interaction change this caused was now if left alone, the Mega Minion would only get one hit on the tower instead of two. This might not sound like a lot, but it's pretty big when you think about it. One hit less meant there was 258 damage lost at level 9 tournament standard, which is about what a lightning deals to crown towers today. This meant there was far less punishment for ignoring the 3 elixir unit and saving that elixir for something else. You definitely felt this if you were a Mega Minion player. Of course, its primary purpose wasn't to get chip damage. It was more of a bonus. So where it really hurt was when it was going against building targeting units since they would now enter its range later and exit it earlier. So naturally, after the balance changes went live, the rates went down. This balance change definitely had more of an effect than a simple hit speed nerf, but even after a few weeks of the balance changes settling in, you still saw Mega Minion in about a quarter of Grand Challenge decks. I found it kind of interesting because in the months following July, Every stat I could find had the Mega Minion's usage at exactly 22%, so it seemed like it had settled there until we got to the dreaded October 2019 season. I feel like in almost every video, I have to cover this season specifically because it was such a meta changer. Most cards this season had a rapid change in usage for better or for worse, and in the Mega Minion's case, it was definitely worse. The card had been holding steady at 22% usage for about 3 months by this point, but as the meta quickly changed in October 2019, the Mega Minion found itself only being played one third as often as it used to be. Part of this can be attributed to the rise of Witch and Night Witch. As we already saw in 2017, the Mega Minion had a noticeable dip in popularity when the Night Witch was all over the place. And now the Night Witch was once again all over the place. And when there's Night Witch, a lot of bats are right there with it. The regular Witch was also incredibly frequent this season. Not only did it deal a hefty amount of damage, but those skeletons overwhelmed the Mega Minion more than the bats did. Mega Minion simply struggled to get value in this meta since nearly every person was using one of these two cards. Especially with the slower hit speed it had since the last time Night Witch was really prominent in the meta, it in no way could take out the swarms fast enough to be useful. But perhaps an even more prominent reason why the Mega Minion wasn't useful was due to the release of the Elixir Golem. The Elixir Golem was a new beatdown win condition released this month, and despite the Mega Minion working well with multiple other beatdown win conditions, most of the popular E Golem decks didn't, instead, favoring more expensive air support units. At first, you may assume it's simply because there was a higher demand for them due to all the bats and skeletons in the arena. And although that may be at least partially true, that can't be the only explanation. Because plenty of traditional beatdown decks were still opting to use the Mega Minion in this environment. And if we're skipping ahead a bit, there really has never been a top Elixir Golem deck that included it. This is because the Elixir Golem is a very unique card in the sense that it gives you 6-7 to seven Elixir worth of stats for just 3 Elixir, giving the opponent some Elixir to compensate. So the E Golem player saved a lot of Elixir when placing it, which allowed the luxury to play more expensive cards when supporting it. And you really had to do that if you wanted to utilize the value of Elixir Golem. October 2019 was the lowest point for the Mega Minion so far, and it still had just below average rates. In the next few months, as Elixir Golem, Night Witch, and Witch were toned down, you saw the Mega Minion's rates rise and hold at around 11-16% to usage, until a new air support unit was added in June, the Skeleton Dragons. This duo of dragons was taking over the game, diminishing the demand for Mega Minion once again. Throughout this period, its use rate dropped to about 6-8%, not seeing another rise back up to its 11-16% to usage range until October, where the Skeleton Dragons would finally get a proper nerf. In 2020, you mostly saw the Mega Minion appearing in Golem or Lava Hound decks. 
but you still sometimes saw it appearing in Giant, Royal Giant, and even the occasional Graveyard deck. It was pretty much just new variations of the same archetypes it's already been appearing in in previous years, so I don't feel the need to go in depth going over the specifics for each one. 2021 was mostly the same. The Elite Barbarians, Mother Witch, and Bomber became Mena Warping come March 2021, which ultimately benefited the archetypes that Mega Minion worked best in. In fact, in June, the Mega Minion's use rate peaked at 18% with an impressive 57% win rate. These were the highest rates it's had since 2019. I think this was mostly thanks to the Mother Witch. She was keeping a lot of swarm decks in check, which gave the Mega Minion some good room to breathe. Later in the year, the rates would fall again when champions were released, likely thanks to the overpowered Archer Queen. But as the game somewhat balanced out by the end of the year, the card's usage rate settled around 11% in challenges. The one Mega Minion deck that was consistently appearing on the leaderboards throughout the last few years was Giant Double Prince. Even though Mega Minion had been consistently appearing in multiple different archetypes, this exact variant of Giant Double Prince was really the one consistent deck that included the Mega Minion. It was certainly no Log Bait or Hog 2.6, but few decks lasted in the meta for as long as this one. So overall, throughout the entire Mega Minions history up through the end of 2021, there's never really been a period up to this point where it was considered useless. It's had some brief downfalls for sure, but at no point would anybody seriously argue it needed a buff. It had been well over two years and counting since the Mega Minions last balance change by now, and if it wasn't on anybody's radar for a balance change before, then it certainly wasn't now. The goal for a balanced card by now was about 6-8% usage with a 45-55% to win rate. If we look at the last available stat from 2021, it did technically exceed those boundaries, but it would have been extremely nitpicky to nerf a card with those kinds of stats, especially one the community wasn't upset about. But when even a balanced card doesn't receive any sort of balance change for years on end, it's very likely that that card will eventually become too strong or slowly phase out of the meta over time. With an ever-changing environment, it's nearly impossible for any card to maintain the same rates forever. Mega Minion had generally always had a place in the game up until this point. Even though plenty of other air support units have been added since its release, it still had a place thanks to being the only one that was under 4 elixir and resistant to big spells. But going into 2022, you started to see the Mega Minion phasing out of the meta. By February, its use rate fell to the 7-9% range, right around what a perfectly balanced card would have. And this wasn't temporary. As we go through the year, the raids stayed in that range and even fell to as low as 5% by October. The 2022 environment was just not as suited for this type of card. You had Skeleton King Swarm decks rising into prominence, as well as Electro Giant Cycle decks, which just weren't strategies that needed a slow-moving melee single-target troop. Classic Beatdown, Giant, Golem, and Lava Hound decks just weren't as present throughout 2022, and this took a toll on the Mega Minion. But again, I will emphasize that the card wasn't useless, it was just more niche. It still worked fine with the strategies it had been working well in, you were just starting to see different strategies arise. But virtually, none of this would matter when one major event in October 2022 would change everything. We have seen new air support cards being released left and right since the Mega Minions inclusion, and although sometimes it could cause a brief fall, it would always bounce back. And even occasionally, those new air support cards would ultimately strengthen the Mega Minion. October 2022 would see the addition of the last air support unit the game would ever see, the Phoenix. The Phoenix was more similar to Mega Minion than any existing card in Clash Royale, because even though it cost one more elixir, it was a spell-resistant, single-target unit and didn't need to build up a charge like Inferno Dragon. Phoenix was some pretty serious competition. This was certainly not a card you were ever going to see in the same deck as Mega Minion. Both units had the same movement speed and range, and although the Mega Minion did slightly more damage per hit, the Phoenix still dealt enough to one-shot troops like Minions. Moving on to the advantages the Phoenix had, it for one attacked 7 tenths of a second faster while having enough health to survive a lightning, had death damage, and the potential to revive itself. As you could imagine, the Phoenix was far more appealing than this old rust bucket, and thus the use and win rates immediately fell to being the worst they've ever been, 
having the second lowest win rate in the game right in between its minions brethren. Not only was the Phoenix a solid replacement to this card, it was an amazing counter. In fact, it countered all of the other flying cards really well. There was just no place in the game for Mega Minion anymore. The Phoenix had completely taken over the game. And if all that wasn't bad enough, there was an overpowered champion, the Monk, released at the same time, which was also seen in over half of Grand Challenge decks upon launch. But wait, how would this card negatively affect the Mega Minion? It was a ground targeting troop that could reflect projectiles. Well, you see, even though technically the Mega Minion is a melee troop, it attacks by throwing its spit at its opponent. And since it's technically throwing it, that's a projectile. Thus, the Monk reflects it. Meaning, if a Mega Minion attacked the Monk when its ability was active, it would just end up killing itself. This was a weakness the Phoenix did not have. So you can see why the Minion cards were losing more often than every other card. It's like Supercell designed the perfect environment for them to be in the worst possible state. I mean, these rates even made the wizard look alright. I want to just take a second to question why minions were ever considered melee. They exceeded the range of every melee troop before the simplification and have all the qualifiers of a ranged card. There's no other melee card in Clash Royale that can have their attack reflected by a monk because the minions are the only melee troops with a projectile attack. Also, before the range simplification, every melee card just had melee in their stats, not showing the exact number. Except the minions, which did show their exact tile range, implying they used to be considered ranged troops. It really just makes them stand out in a weird way. The Phoenix obviously needed some major nerfs, and when that happened, the Mega Minions rates were sure to increase once again. But over the next few months, Supercell would give the Phoenix super light nerfs, so it would continuously box out the Mega Minion. It's actually pretty reminiscent of how Supercell treated the Mega Minion in 2016 and 2017. And now that I think about it, that's sort of what happened with the Skeleton Dragons too. So I guess this is just the procedure for flying support cards. Going into 2023, Phoenix was still one of the most popular cards in the game, and thus Mega Minion's rates continued to be poor. But apparently, Supercell wasn't going to wait until the Phoenix was balanced out before deciding what to do with the Mega Minion, because on March 28, 2023, Supercell announced what would be the first buff the Mega Minion would ever receive, a hit speed decrease of not one, not two, but three tenths of a second. That's right, they were reverting it back to the hit speed it had when it was first released in September 2016. Now, obviously, it wouldn't have the same damage or range it did back then, but three tenths of a second was huge, especially for a card that was considered to be relatively balanced just a few months prior. It was essentially a rollback of three consecutive nerfs over a period of three years. What makes this balancing decision even stupider was that they had just buffed the archer's hit speed, who were also underused, by two tenths of a second in the previous set of balance changes, and that made them super broken. With this hit speed reduction, it would now be able to get two swings on the Princess Tower if unanswered once again. The community was freaking out at this announcement, bracing for the return of the Meta Minion. A few days later, Supercell would come to their senses and realize that this was about to be one of the worst balance changes they ever implemented, so they walked back part of this hit speed decrease to only one-tenth of a second. Part of me wishes they just went through with the original plan though, because if they did, this video would have been way more interesting. But from a game balancing point of view, this change definitely made sense. The rates were already falling throughout 2022, and the Phoenix just made it much worse. Even if the Phoenix was in a balance state, Mega Minion still likely would have had subpar raids. But when that's the case, you don't want to give it an insane buff. After this balance change went live, the rates went back up to about what they were in October 2022 pre-Phoenix. It was a little underused, but still useful in the right deck. And that's where it hovered for a while, until around the time Evolved Bats got buffed, Evolved Archers were released, and Little Prince was released. We also saw a new tower troop, the Cannoneer added, and when a player was using it, the Mega Minion got no hits on the tower in a one-on-one -on -one interaction. After all these developments, the Mega Minion was only seen in about 2-3% of Grand Challenge decks, which is a bit surprising considering the Mega Minion, when used correctly, is a solid counter to the popular little brat, I mean Prince. 
Alliance. In a surprising turn of events, though, the rates of Mega Minion at the end of March 2024 have been surprisingly alright, and if you see him today, he will almost certainly be paired with Golem or Lava Hound. The Mega Minion was once an incredibly versatile threat, considered to be a staple card in a variety of popular decks. But with an ever-changing environment, it has diminished to being a niche but still sometimes useful tool in modern beatdown decks. It's certainly nowhere near as popular as it was during its prime, but I don't think it needs any more changes. I feel like it's unlikely to get a change anyway though. It's never gotten much attention from the developers. And I say that because Supercell basically forgot to give it an emote. Every existing troop in the game got one before the Mega Minion did until 2023. And even then, they didn't bother to create one themselves. They let the community do it. One more interesting thing I wanted to mention about the Mega Minion is that even though it's a rare card, Seth, who was the community manager, stated in an interview in 2019 that he wished it was a common card. There are definitely some cards that I wish we could go back and change the rarity of. Like, I wish Mega Minion could be a common. I can't think of a card that would be better suited just to be a common. I feel like by 2019, there were already a lot of cards that didn't quite fit into their rarity, but Mega Minion was never really one I felt was misplaced. However, given its simplicity, I wouldn't disagree with the notion that it should be a common. But card rarities do not change, so no matter how much it deserves it, it will likely remain rare forever. It's not like a card's rarity matters that much anyway. But as always, let me know what you think about the Mega Minion and what card's history you would like to see next. Thank you all so much for listening, and I'll see you all next time.